Hi, everyone, and welcome to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. Wendy has spent the last two years helping women with various stages of endometriosis to heal naturally after putting her condition into remission. After her own healing success from stage four endometriosis and adenomyosis, she's inspired to heal others, and her goal is to help some of the 175 million women know that there is another way other than painkillers, drugs, or surgery. This is the place to be for real talk with real people for real results so you can learn how to heal your endometriosis naturally. Please note that the opinions expressed in this program may represent options but are not a substitute for proper medical care. Before starting any new healthcare program, we recommend you consult with a health professional. Hey everyone, it's Wendy K. Laidlow here and as always, I hope that this podcast finds you well. Um, I wanted to share a little story as it's been a bumpy few days and a little bit different from what one had expected over these Christmas holidays. It all started last week when my body began to show some unusual signs and symptoms, which like most of us do, I obviously did my very best to try and ignore. But having learned the hard way in the past, I decided I did actually need to pay attention and um, especially to these particular symptoms, especially given the increase in numbers of infected people. So I can consciously made an effort to try and do less work and try to slow down. I increased my levels of high quality, high dosage of vitamin C. I took more rest periods in between working and paced out my days. I had convinced myself that I had been successful in beating this background cold, oblique flu-like bug and knocked out the park, or at least knocked it out of my body. But sadly, I was wrong. I totally misjudged and misunderestimated this particular strain of pathogen that had invaded my body. There was the initial thought that perhaps it was just a bout of flu, that traditional visit from the flu fairy that likes to arrive just in time for Christmas to sprinkle its runny nose and coughed gifts before disappearing into the midst until next year. It is a season to be sniffy after all, especially in Scotland with its drab, drich, damp and cold weather, lack of sunlight and winds that are delivered fervently from Iceland. So I decided just to bolster up the defence system for my immune system and carried on. That was until I could not carry on. And that happened to be the day just before Christmas Eve. It sounds like the beginning of some sort of story, but it isn't. On the Thursday, the 23rd of December, I was feeling somewhat epic having wrapped up all of my gifts but I still needed to visit one more shop to get those last few elements. So against my better judgment, I set off into the town centre by foot with this background flu feeling, thinking that going outdoors for only an hour or two would be more than fine for my body. How wrong I was. The shops were filled with a large number of undesirables, shall we say. You know those rude people who have zero awareness of others' personal space, but wrapped up in their own self-indulgent endeavour, i.e. attempting to snatch the item out of your hand if you so much as show any sign of hesitation at any point. The tension mounted from one shop to the next, as this fevered intensity rose as many rushed to get the best deal before the closing of the shops for Christmas. I had walked into what is viewed as my idea of hell. I'm not a good shopper at the best of times. I actively avoid shops and shop online whenever I can. The idea of spending quality time perusing material items endlessly up and down aisles fills me with the same dread and boredom of what I imagine might be watching newly painted paint dry on a wall. But Christmas was coming and I had set my heart and intention on purchasing two particular items for my darling children. I was clear in my mission and no selfish, narcissistic, thoughtless person was going to interfere with that end goal. By the time I'd reached the last shop, the rudeness appeared to have increased tenfold amongst many shoppers, and my vision narrowed down sharply like the tip of a blade. I luckily acquired my desired items, and like with the nimble skills of Wonder Woman, I swooshed into the queue, paid swiftly, and was out of the store like a puff of smoke, onto the wet Edinburgh streets and marched decidedly across the cobbles and quickly home. 
My son had made a delicious supper whilst I had a short meditation to try and recharge my body after such a known fun event and interactions and it all seemed well. Supper was consumed and then we had a lovely effervescent family FaceTime call with my daughter and we all caught up as a family. Not long after, I went to bed with my darling Poppy, my excitable chocolate Labrador, who normally commandeers the majority of my double bed, but tonight cuddled into me closely. Her brown furry body curled up close and tight, like a little pretzel next to me. For a short time as I read and prepared to go to sleep, it felt like domestic bliss. Then slowly I became aware of this change in my body. In slow motion I noticed my toes become extremely cold. This cold then seemed to move up into my feet, then into my legs, then my thighs and stomach and chest, enveloping me and filling all of my body. I was aware of this kind of happening as if an outsider looking in and it almost felt surreal. I questioned if I was indeed imagining this or if it was real. And oh my goodness, yes, this was real. Suddenly, without warning, the cold in both of my arms started to take hold and I started to shake vigorously out with my control. Now I was very scared. What the heck was happening, I asked myself. My arms and torso kept shaking profoundly as if, and I felt as if this deep cold penetration into my bones and muscles had a life of its own. So I did my best to layer up with the duvet and additional three layers of blankets. But unfortunately, that did not suffice my body. I recognised I needed more heat. So I managed to literally shake my way through to the kitchen where I grappled to find the hot water bottle hidden deep within the larder cupboard. Have I mentioned I haven't used my hot water bottle for 10 years since I have put endometriosis into remission? I was wholly relieved to see the kettle was already full of water, and once boiled I used all of my might and every bit of willpower to steady my hands with great effort to gently pour the hot water into the hot water bottle without scalding myself. Once the task was completed, I shuffled and shook my way back to the bed, hugging the hot water water bottle tightly and wrapped myself further under additional layers of coverings. Feeling my body grow colder from the inside out and watching it in slow motion as it shook over my body was a bizarre sensation. To see it start to uncontrollably shake was terrifying. I had heard of people getting the shakes when they had the flu or hypothermia or pneumonia, but never heard of rigors before. Rigors is the term used when the muscles become involuntary, engaged in the art of pumping the blood to the main organs as the virus or whatever virus or bacteria in your body takes hold. And this was no weak virus. This virus meant business. It had fully announced its arrival and made itself clear and it was going to be around apparently for a few days. Much like in the olden days when that old, distant, unwelcome relative turns up at your door, knocks with great vever and uh, energy to announce that they are going to be staying for a few days with their toxic energy. Somehow I managed to get a few hours sleep. Little did I know that the rest, or the best, was yet to come the next day. Whilst all week I would had some flu-like symptoms, like a dry, scratchy cough, and a sore head and fogginess with that background sense of a flu brewing, nothing could have prepared me for what lay ahead on Friday, which was Christmas Eve. I tossed and turned through the night and woke on Christmas Eve, recognising my body was not a happy organism. It was burning up hot so badly that you could have fried an egg on my back. My forehead felt like it had been wrapped in a tight metal vice. It hurt so badly. My scratchy throat symptoms had now progressed into what felt like a hot golf ball, homegrown overnight, had appeared into the right-hand side of my neck, making it hard for me to swallow. And I was now also struggling to get any air into my lungs. I had a whole new awe and respect for the body's factory functions and settings, ready to take over when it needed to endure and ensure survival and safety. There are so many wonderful systems in our body, 
including the circulatory system, digestive system, endocrine system, immune system, lymphatic, muscular, nervous, reproductive, respiratory, skeletal and urinary systems. But the main body system working on Christmas Eve was my mighty immune system. Our incredible immune system defends our body against all alien invaders, such as viruses, bacteria and foreign bodies every day. It literally never sleeps and always takes priority over other organ systems when viruses appear. Despite all these increase, increases in symptoms, I recognise that the best and only way to support my body to do what it wanted to do, which was what I call ultimate and total bed rest. I was lucky because both of my amazing children were staying at home on Christmas Eve and my daughter was wonderful at bringing me a cold compress for my head to battle the heat, bottles of still mineral water to drink and keep me hydrated, gluten-free toast with oodles of butter if I had felt hungry, lem sips and of course my nutritious power shakes. But unfortunately I could barely consume or digest anything. My body was under a full-blown fast and furious attack from an unidentified enemy breaching its defences and all-out war was raging within me. I could literally feel it all happening inside. I've read countless studies over the years, read the research papers and the science, and read, along with many thousands of incredible healing stories, including my own, to know of what feats the body is capable of. So I kept the faith, I prayed and asked my mind to let go and let nature take care of its own. And the best way to support my body in that process, I knew, was to sleep. Sleep, rest and recuperate. For you see, sleep is a miraculous action that offers recharge, repair and regeneration of cells on many levels. So I had many intermittent and fitful bouts of sleep, but each time I woke I could feel small physical improvements. I could feel the progress. I could feel the immune system at work. Christmas Eve was a full bed-bound experience and being bedridden was not something I have had for almost a decade. Yet I recognise I needed to ignore the guilt and the pool to get up and be busy and do any of the million things that are always calling for one's attention to do. They could wait. I wanted to be well and ideally for Christmas. Even if that was a little bit of wishful thinking at the time, it served me well. So with a cold compress on my forehead and sipping mineral water intermittently as I could intersperse with little chunks of sleep, Slowly my temperature reduced and I was able to sit up. That night my body was about to embark on a new chapter of the Battle of the Flovid and I would sleep fitfully and wake often to find my body drenched and shaking in cold sweat and have to change my top regularly. I would do a home test to discover that yes, it was official, I tested a positive for Flovid. There was some comfort to have a real name for the Mirada symptoms and a slight annoyance that, despite appropriate protection, I had caught this pesky thing. Christmas Day would bring further relief and progress, although it was spent again in bed. Whereas on Christmas Eve, the day before I was about 100% out of the box, Christmas Day I felt only 90%. This progress, albeit small, was welcomed. Although this virus seemed to be moving through different stages and phases and layers quicker than I could note, a 10% improvement was welcomed and received like a big juicy Christmas gift. And how often do we all take our health for granted until it is compromised? Yet health is your wealth. Health is literally one of life's most precious gifts. I am fortunate to be so appreciative, so grateful and thankful for my health and my children's health normally. Having been someone in the past who was so terribly ill for decades, I have welcomed this new, improved and energised body that I tend to have these days. So to have it under attack from this alien pathogen was annoying to say the least. Yet I was surprised to find myself relieved that despite my initial reluctance to have that double jab that everybody was encouraged to have, I did relent. And thank goodness I did. I believe those double jabs enabled my body to fight this virus more effectively and far more quickly than I imagined. Whilst nobody wishes to have any needle injected into their body, I certainly believe its contents on this occasion may have helped to me to combat this flovid more quickly 
than I have seen my body deal with viruses historically. So throughout the day on Christmas Day, minute by minute, hour on hour, I steadily felt my body get stronger and fitter. I had my first small, albeit dry piece of turkey in the evening of Christmas Day, and I felt the sands of time slip fast, and immediately I had to go back to sleep for 40 minutes afterwards. This reminded me that when the body is fighting for your life, it is not so concerned about consuming food and the digestion of it. In these circumstances, the body has all of its top resources focusing on the immune system department, with generals dictating and directing to its elite army of troopers to dispatch out into the bloodstream and destroy the alien enemy invaders. So as I write this and speak this, it is Boxing Day. I continue to feel improvement, probably about 50% now. So there is there, so there has been some great improvement, but I'm still in bed and I still have some way to go. And this is where my challenge continues, as I recognise I need to keep doing active resting. Yes, active resting is an oxymoron and designed to be so, and to be stated so on purpose. Many people in many different societies across the globe are conditioned now, encouraged and almost celebrated for pushing through and progressing past what our bodies are capable of or able to deal with sometimes, which of course ends up leading to burnout. There's a time and place for that stoicism and approach, but not with a virus like this, nor, of course, as you know, with endometriosis. And viruses of all kinds, especially the current ones like Flovid, loves a body that is undernourished, unhealthy, sleep-deprived, overworked, overstressed and burnt out. So make sure not to have a body like that. I admit that I'm still wrestling with resting. There's a mouthful for you, wrestling with resting. But my inner parental voice wins loud and clear, for to ignore it may mean a prolonged journey back to health. And I choose to get back to full health quickly. I chose voluntarily to rest or otherwise at some point if I push too much it may become demanded of me. And I intend to stay on the fast track path here which feels slow sometimes when I feel impatient but is of course as you know by now actually super fast. You know my motto, slow is fast. So make sure to rest up yourself lots this winter and take lots of super self care seriously especially if your body starts to show any signs and symptoms. It could make a huge difference to you and your health. Remember, you are worth it. The irony is, the quicker you pay attention and support your body in whatever capacity it's speaking to you in, the quicker it heals. There is a misconception of weakness or laziness if you rest or recuperate. I share this story so to reassure you again that your body is an awesome, supreme machine and to trust its ability to heal naturally. But create the right environment and give it the right ingredients to do so. Make sure to feed your body the very best of what it needs to support itself, from from bone broth to vegetable soups to power shakes, and surround yourself with safe, nurturing people, for that also helps with relaxing the nervous system, which then in turn allows all the energies to be diverted to your amazing immune system. To enable that to do what is what it is awesome at doing, healing at super warp speed. Keep yourself super safe and indulge in super self care this Christmas. And if you need uh, support and guidance on how to develop or um, encourage that super self care, we've got the twenty one day challenge coming up soon. So please make sure to go and visit that at endoboss.com forward slash challenge where I can challenge you and teach you how to develop self-care protocols that are going to support your body without guilt and without feeling uh, insecure or uh, guilty in any way, shape or form to support your body in the way that it needs to be supported. So keep yourself safe this Christmas and to your health. Thanks for listening to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and rate us. If you're interested in learning more, you can download your top five jumpstart tips at healendometriosisnaturally.com and jump on the VIP email list. 
Remember to keep you number one. The world needs a healthy you.